Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Hi, folks. You're not going to believe where we are. We're up here in Lake Fontana, North Carolina. Stan and I and the family, well, Wendy and Walter and Gail, we're all here, and we're up here staying at a Southeastern Outdoor Press Association meeting. It's yeah. my first one. Yeah, see up, uh, uh, Winston, uh, glad you're, you are a member, and uh, of course Walter and Whitney and the family, they're members as well. Uh, glad you're here. This is CLP's 50th anniversary, and uh, it's going to be a great week. Well, listen, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I've heard so much about it for years. I finally got in here, and, and I'm so excited about beating these people you told me about. Uh, and what a great location. Yeah, this is one of the prettiest locations in the United States. You know, I think our area is pretty on the Gulf Coast, but this is a beautiful area. Um, uh, just so much rich culture and heritage in this area, and we're going to hear about that this week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, I sort of get tickled because as a kid, we'd come up here and, and camp out in the smokers with my family, and we always worried about the bears. But now, now we got more bears in Florida. So, that we're yeah. do, I mean, then we. So yeah, uh, maybe we need to bring them a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking forward to it. And thank you for inviting, you know, for riding with us and all the but for the yeah. invitation to join CELPA. Well, CELPA is a great organization. Good place to network, meet people, get ideas for stories, stories, things that you do on your program. It's just. Uh, it fits like a glove. Okay, so we're getting ready to go to these meetings. We're going to be rolling all weekend, and we'll come back with some great video for y'all. Is it hard? It's and you put it around her waist and tie it in the oh, back. Cool. That's the one. Yeah. So that's that's the, uh, the wider shuck I just handed out. Oh, this, what is this? Oh, here. Oh, uh, wait, are you having fun? That's oh, in half this way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in half this way, right? This piece here? Yes. Let me tie it in the waist. Oh. Yes, fun? the wide in the back. All right. It's a Friday morning and, uh, well, you tell us about what was this fun stuff. Tell yeah. us what's going on. This is called the breakout session where all the uh, sponsors, they bring their samples of stuff that they've got coming out soon. And uh, everyone who is attending SIOPA can come and check it out and get samples. And this is, pro this is one of my favorite parts of uh, coming out here because I get to see everything that everyone's got coming and uh, they're going to give out in the future. So it's, it's a pretty cool time. All right. Yeah, I've been to a lot of outdoor shows. Well, I've never been to one with this kind of location. Check this out. You're talking about on the riverbank. Wow. This is beautiful. And up here is a Fontana Dam. We're going to get some video, too, of the Fontana Dam. 
Well, it is pretty, isn't it? It's gorgeous. The water is so clear. Is it laying in the water? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, we're here with Larkin Green, uh, and we have a new product here. Larkin, sort of tell us what's going on and what, what your product does. Okay. Well, this is uh, SG20. Uh, it's a liquid urethane repair material that can be used to repair um, neoprene waders, breathable waders for fishing, hunting. Uh, it will bond to canvas felt, wood, uh, metal, about the, about, the only thing that it doesn't bond real well to is vinyl, uh, PVC. Um, so it, uh, it's dispensed by syringe, so it's a two-part, some people consider this epoxy, but it's actually polyurethane. So we cut the, the tip off, and then we apply a mixing tip, and then it's ready to dispense. Okay. So to show how that actually works, we've got a defect something like this okay, okay. whether it's a puncture or a, or a tear of any size um, it can be damp or it can be dry and we simply dispense the material you can tell that it's like syrup so it's self leveling okay so we can leave that just like that and in a minute that will be set and about 10 minutes it will be um, You'll be able to handle it, and you'll be able to go back in the water within 30 minutes. Wow. Okay. So if you want this, if this is in a flex area, and you want that to be more flexible, then you put a piece of plastic that's included in the kit, and we just press it down. You've got about 30 or 40 seconds to do that. Okay. And then we're going to leave that plastic on there for about 15 minutes, and then we'll tear it off, and it will look like this. Okay. So this was actually done, you probably can't see it, but it was done with, with it moist. There's the defect, and there's the repair. That repair will never peel off of there without right. actually uh, destroying the fabric. Okay, right, that, that's really cool. Good stuff, so we call it uh, SG20. SG20, yeah. All right, well thank you so much, Larkin. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Josh Douglas. Uh, Navionics. Navionics. Tell me and tell our viewing audience why we need Navionics. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, first of all, Navionics started as a, a software company that developed lake maps for electronics, like uh, Lorance, Hummingbird, Raymarine. Mm -hmm. uh, you slide the card in, and it, it brings your. For me, I always said it brought my unit to life. It showed me where to look, mm -hmm. where to start. You know, showed me my maps, kept me safe on the water, how to get on and off, but. More importantly, to a fisherman like myself, it, it shows me where to catch them and, and the kind of contour and stuff that they hang on. Since then, they've, they've come a long way since, the, since just the map. Now, that's still their bread and butter is making those SD cards, but they also now make apps for Android, uh, iPhone, iPad, stuff like that. And essentially, they, they're able to turn your phone into a handheld GPS system. It allows you to save waypoints. So, yep, you put, you put an OtterBox or a Life Proof on, and I, I take my iPad right out on the water with me. Uh, I can view sonar charts. That is Navionics' newest and greatest mapping. That gives you, myself, anybody in the community the, the opportunity to be able to log sonar while they're on the water fishing and really bring high definition to these maps. I mean, yeah. the old mowing the lawn deal, I mean, that's what started it all. Right. That's what we learned off of. But to be able to really break it down, or maybe river systems that change all the time, yeah. or, or the panhandle, you're working with intercoastal water and stuff, it just changes from year out to, you know, the maps become old that's true. after a while. That's true. Well, that, that's cool. I thought I had it on here. I, 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 must, have, I must have lost it. But, uh, well, we can get you another one. Well, okay, that's we'll have to do that then. But uh, you, you're on the front line. You're a fisherman yourself. Right? I am. I am. Yep. Just had a tournament on North Carolina for the Bassmaster uh, Southern Open. So. Okay, so you're a big bass man. I am big bass man. Yep. That's, that's yep. great. That's great. So, uh, folks, uh, we can find these anywhere, right? I mean, uh, uh, well, the, the, the apps are available uh, if you have an iPhone through iTunes. Okay. Um, they've won awards actually through iTunes with that right. app. And then, of course, the Navionics maps are available at any Bass Pro, any any big time yeah. retailer, and or Blue, online, of course. And my sponsor, Blue Water Outriggers, has them too. There you go, right. Blue Water Outriggers. They're good people. I know them well. Oh, I, good, I, right. I travel through there quite a bit. Oh, good, good guys. Deal. Yep. Good deal. Yep. Well, thank yep. you so much. Absolutely. Appreciate right, it. Thanks for stopping by.
my folks, you know, I'm always looking for tackle on these shows and all. And here I've met T.J. Stallings, a Florida native. And uh, T.J., tell us what's going on. Well, I'm the uh, lackey that invents stuff. I drink mushroom tea and I come up with some ideas. I'm the originator of the Red Hook Theory. You actually originated that theory? Yes, sir. They had red hooks out there, and a lot of guys liked red hooks, and they didn't know why. And I did 17 years, years with research on why red triggered feeding response. The fish naturally attracted to red because they, it's a blood injury connection. Mm -hmm. And that being said, if the fish is hitting the hook, it's hard to miss the fish. Yeah. So that's yeah. what we did. We came up with a bunch of red hooks, circle hooks for speckled trout and so forth. Wow. All right. And redfish too. Now taking that a step further, uh, the, the popularity of that uh, multi uh, lure rig, the umbrella rig, some people call them Alabama rigs, um, figured out pretty quickly. When you hook a fish two or three times and then release him, his own brothers and sisters will hit them injuries. So that being said, we came up with a rig with just two. Okay. Respectful trout, bass, spotted bass, just about any game fish. That old tandem rig. And you can fish it all day and not get wore out. Yeah. You've had good success with it? Oh, my goodness, yes. Now, you're a fishing guy, and uh, you fish all the time, right? I sure do. I sure so, do. Uh, so, yeah, that's what you're recommending. And where can we find these? In our tackle stores? Yeah, your local tackle okay. shop will have it. Yes. Well, Blue Water is one of the big sponsors. I'm sure they'll have it. All right, one other, give, me, give me a quick tip for our viewers just in general fishing all your life. What would, you, what would one tip you'd give all our viewers? Let's talk about Sabiki rigs real quick. Sabiki? Sabiki rigs. They're so important. Here again, there's a Sabiki rig with bleeding bait hooks. I get people to call me and say, hey, did you know this out fishes five boats? Yes, I do. I tested it <laughs> and it came out with it. But here's your tip. Take a target bead, which is a soft plastic bead. It feels like silicone. Yeah. Run your line through it first, then tie it to your sabiki bead. I'm guilty, you're guilty from reeling it up and hitting the tip and going through the guides. Yeah. That soft target bead will protect your tip top and keep you from reeling it up inside the I see. Good deal. And if you use a glass bead, you might cut your line, so use something soft like the target bead. Okay. Well, thank you so much, TJ. Thanks for having me. Bye, right, buddy. I'm, a, I'm an honest politician and an honest auctioneer. I got her at 150. Boy, good morning. Get that out. <laughs> I got her at 150. Now 160. 160 being 165. Another 160. Another 160. She'll be it again. Help me out. 160. Y'all type for it. 160 being 169. Another 160. All good and all done. Anybody 160? You bought it. $150. Bidder number 291. $150. Bidder 291. Here we go. Next item up. Next item is a Mossberg 500, 20 gauge, with logo, again, one of a kind, there won't be another one like this. You can look at it, of course, you'll have to go through your local FFL to get it, but this is a Mossberg 500, 20 gauge, with logo. Okay, Merry Christmas, it's coming right around the corner, for the quarter. Give me that a hug right there, for the quarter, help me out, y'all clap for it. No pressure from me. Four and a quarter, four and three and a quarter, five and four and a quarter. Come on, Pop. What you gonna do? What's twenty five dollars? You gonna go home and say, "Shut up, I'll take your friend, boy." Thank you. All right, we had a shooting there a range. There's only a couple more, three or four more. Okay. Nice location for shooting range. Okay. Dan, think we're gonna hit the target, buddy? Well. Oh yeah, all bullseyes. All bullseyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kick door. This one, this one one like Just don't let I want one of these now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where are you guys from? Florida? Yeah. Panama City. Panama City. That's great watermelon target, so it actually oozes out. Yeah. Yeah, in the hot summertime, it really does. This kind of weather yeah. is so-so, but... That's uh, cool. Because you got glasses, sunglasses. Oh, you're shooting Ooh, not bad. Yeah. What do you think? 22? Long bracket. And that's what I'm going to follow behind him. So I'm down there with you, Joe. Okay. I know you're going to dig him in the side. Yeah. Go. That's what we call a gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Mother Teresa died. And uh, when she shot heaven, she, uh, Mother, we were so happy to have you. Right on the bullseye. I'd like to. We're out of ammo. And now I want you to take you to the tour. Okay. You're welcome. I couldn't say I've got batteries. That battery is still with you. One inch high. The night, he's one of the newest members of the National Freshwater Hall of Fame, and he is Siopa's only living founding member. That deserves a round of applause, right? Woo! There. <laughs> Distinguished career as outdoor editor of Greensboro, North Carolina Daily News, and another with the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. All right, now, Mr. Wade Bourne, don't let his boyish grin fool you. He's older than he looks. <laughs> and is perhaps known as the co best known as the co-host of Ducks Unlimited TV. He also hosts Wired to Fish and Hunt Radio and is the senior editor at Bassmaster Magazine. He and his wife Becky reside in Clarksville, Tennessee. Oh, there you go. All right, Mr. J. Wayne Fears, and I don't think we have enough time to mention everything, all his credits and accolades, but uh, as you may have read in the program, uh, he started his career when the wildlife resources program he developed at the University of Georgia was published as a feature article in the March 1966 issue of Outdoor Life magazine. 29 books and more than 5,800 magazine articles later, I'd say Jane Wayne is off to a good start. <laughs> he joined Siopa in 1968 and did his time as president in 1974. And I'm as old as I look like I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Glenn Harris, old Mr. Glenn, he loves music, but he realized pretty early on that he'd starve if he depended on his guitar to make a living. <laughs> so he did the next best thing, and he uh, turned his love of fishing, hunting, and all things outdoors into a career. He's been awarded with more than 50 CFO awards in the newspaper, magazine, and radio categories. And I'm just kidding about his guitar playing. He's a great picker, and you'll hear from him tonight. All right, there you go. Thank you. And uh, Mr. John Phillips. And I think I'd say Mr. John is about as energetic as, uh, and innovative as an outdoor writer gets. He's one of the best marketers in the business, and he has so many pseudonyms that his wife, Denise, pretty much just calls him world's greatest. And she's more the brains of the outdoor. <laughs>
Folks, the food here has been phenomenal. People are serving. This is a uh, final meal, but this is food has been like this the whole time. Look here. The first person I see is Stan, Stan Kirkland. That's Stan's food. Man, have you had enough to eat, buddy? No, I'm actually, uh, I got some, I'm, I'm doing very poorly, actually. <laughs> I haven't lost weight this week. <laughs> This is shrimp they're cooking over here. And then, uh, they have their red some wonderful people. Jill Easton just made us feel like part of the family. Thank you so much. Oh, well, CEOP is a wonderful organization, and the thing we do is share with each other. For the past few days, we've been sharing information, we've been sharing stories, and you've met a lot of the most important people in the outdoor industry, I'm, haven't you? I'm amazed by the just a cordiality and the friendliness and the genuine down-to-earth people that these riders are. We just feel like anybody with the talent that your family has is a welcome addition to CO. Well, thank you. Tell us real quick in a nutshell sort of what some of the things you do. You don't, don't I'm a trapper and a turkey hunter and a full-time freelance outdoor writer. So. Wow. That's, yes. that's a good resume right there. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope to see you again some more. I, uh, you better. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.